Welcome to the first of three webinars that Break uh, the Road Safety Charity is holding on the topic of maintenance and mechanics, how safe are your vehicles. Uh, this is the first of those webinars uh, being presented by Mark Woodworth and Ian Leonard from Speedy Services. I will pass uh, the webinar over to Mark and Ian who will talk you through their presentation. Hello everybody, my name is Ian Leonard, I'm the Group Fleet Services Manager for Speedy and this is my colleague Mark Woodworth. Hi, I'm Mark Woodworth, he looks after the Logistics Project Manager, we look after all projects within Transport Logistics. We're here today to talk to you about maintenance and improvements that we've made using data from our telematics provider to improve our vehicle services. First of all, before we go into the problems we've had and, and the way we've overcome them, a uh, short introduction on who are Speedy.
There you go. That was an introduction to Speedy as an organization. <clears throat> Speedy are accredited to silver level in the full standard on a national level, and we've recently started work on the clock scheme. We're working through work streams one, two, and three, trying to make the roads and vehicles a safer place for vulnerable road users. Speedy have also run excellence accredited. I've had this accreditation now for near two years, um, and we'll continue working with the FTA and TFL um, to get it. To, to achieve any new accreditations at Corbett. Speedy's recent successes were awarded um, Safest Fleet of the Year in 2014, the Fleet News, Fleet News Awards in February. This took uh, an awful lot of getting to, uh, and we're very, very proud to receive this award. Likewise, we awarded Safe Van Fleet of the Year in 2014, and Van Fleet of the Year in 2014. The most prestigious of all, though, as we see it, Speedy, is the Brake Fleet Safety Award. Um, this, this was the, the award we're most proud of, uh, and, and believe Brake are a great charity to support and, uh, and start work with. In terms of innovations, um, we were one of the first in our sector to bring PDAs to our drivers. Initially, PDAs were brought into our business to um, improve our proof of delivery, but the uh, transport team saw this as an opportunity to increase our vision of vehicle checks and so our PDAs have a vehicle check application, they have an accident reporting application and both of these things have helped improve our vehicle condition, our serviceability and our accident reporting time to our accident management provider Lex Auto Lease. All of the HGVs that operate within Speedy now are equipped with view camera systems, we have four camera systems uh, on our vehicles two systems, we have a hard drive system and we have an SD card system and we use this data on a weekly basis to review any incidents and accidents that happen with the heavy goods vehicles. Again on the heavy goods vehicles for an ease of access and to protect people from falling from vehicles, we have a unique hydraulic side step on our biggest vehicles. This allows easy access to the side of the vehicle when the vehicle bed is completely full. Going back some years, we were the first in our industry to add tail lift gates to our tail lifts, taking a cue from the supermarket industry. We have these gates fitted uh, to our vehicles back in 2006, 2007, and have continued with this to date. And indeed, it's now been copied by many of our competitors. And finally, a ladder lock system. In order to be able to secure long loads, ladders, staging boards, etc., we now have a very, very simple to use system that can hang on to any long load regardless of how many straps are holding the load on in the bed of the vehicle. Despite all this good work, we had some concerns some years ago about the serviceability of our vehicles and our vehicles being presented on time for their service intervals with the dealers. Um, this has been an issue with us for a while because we have an ownership issue at the, at the, at the depot end of our business. Uh, and Presenting vehicles on time, every time, is becoming a real issue for us. We have around 900 of these vehicles in the fleet, and to try and get them serviced on time, every time, was proving to be a real challenge. So that gave us some questions. We've now got the problem. VOR being too high. Supplier unable to accommodate vehicles at short notice, potentially, given the time that our depot will give the dealers to try and accommodate such vehicles. But yeah, and also additional repairs. The vehicle presented late, that may mean additional repairs, and the dealership then can't carry out, or if they can carry them out, the vehicle's off the road for a longer period. We sat down and thought through some potential solutions. We were looking at asking dealers to manage individual vehicles with our depots. Uh, we looked at educating our drivers as to service requirements for each vehicle, both of which seemed inappropriate so far. Presume expected survey dates based on previous history. Now this, this wouldn't work as well in our fleet because our, our vehicles may move depot, our vehicles may change use per purpose, so we may use a vehicle in a different application which may, may alter the mileage. Um, and the, the final solution which is one we went with is using live data from our telemetry provider and cross check this data from our vehicle provider's next auto lease. So the solution works a bit like this. Plastonaut and our telemetry provider record the vehicle loader at midnight every day. Mastonaut then report this to our vehicle provider Lex Auto Lease, who cross-check the vehicle odometer with the service requirements of that vehicle. If the service is required within two and a half thousand miles, 
so it isn't re required in two and a half thousand miles, the system will await a new update. So in theory, this, this will be a process that will be followed most, most evenings. If a vehicle service is required in two and a half thousand miles, a service is requested by left auto lease with a local dealer. Once that happens, the dealer then contacts a depot with three opportunities to get that vehicle booked in. Once the booking's been made, the depot are then fully aware well in advance the vehicle's going to be off the road for the day. The dealership are aware of the vehicle condition and mileage and may have any additional parts should any, any vehicle require them or be presumed to require them, that, require them at that time. And also hopefully get the vehicle booked in early on so the vehicle will be back on the road uh, as quick as possible. Success rate. So, so, um, success rate of this was very good. As you can see on the graph on screen, the trend line is, is coming downwards. There was a peak around March 2013. That was when we went live with this system. So obviously a lot of vehicles then that were, were falling behind on the service rate uh, were serviced during this time. After that, it seemed to plateau once that had been completed around May, June 2013, and it stayed at a similar level. We're just showing our go live date. Before March 2013, our average VOR was 143 days across the fleet, and after March 2013, that had come down to 38. Hand over back over to Ian to talk through some additional benefits. Additional benefits, clearly, uh, no engine failures. Because our vehicles are being serviced on time, we don't have any issues with engine failures that we used to have some years ago. Increased customer internal service. Uh, because our vehicles are more reliable, it means we get to our customers on a more reliable basis. We don't have our vehicles being off the road. We don't have to give any excuses to customers about not being able to get there because our vehicles are broken down. That concludes our presentation for today. Any questions? Thank you very much, Mark and Ian, for your presentation uh, there. You mentioned uh, briefly there that you um, don't have any uh, vehicles uh, off the road or, or they're off for, for a short period. Uh, do you have any um, problems now with sudden um, repairs or, or uh, maintenance that, that is needed that isn't covered on, on your graph and uh, isn't covered by uh, pre-bookings, do you, do you sometimes have vehicles that you still have to take off the road um, and, and how do you uh, prepare and equip for, for those, uh, in, uh, you know, those uh, sudden uh, changes that need making? I get it Ian, sorry, there, there, there will always be occasions where ad hoc maintenance or things that you can't possibly plan for and foresee take place and there will be occasions on a daily basis where we do have vehicles that are stood down for whatever reason. Um, in order to combat that, we have a rather unique agreement with um, Hertz Rental, uh, where we have um, some identically specified vehicles to our own dotted around the country. We have about 20 of those made available to us within a four-hour window. So if we do lose one of our own vehicles, and our own vehicles are quite specific to us, we can call Hertz and within four hours we can have a replacement vehicle issued to the depot so we can continue on with our customer service. That sounds brilliant. And obviously, you um, you identified uh, this is an issue a few years back, and, and you've um, you've put uh, procedures in place. Uh, have you identified anything uh, on top of that? What what is your current uh, aim or, or anything in it for the future that you're looking to work on and develop uh, to to make sure that your vehicles do remain uh, well maintained? Yeah, hi, it's Mark. Um, the next level of the process is we're working with our telemetry provider to provide fault codes from the man engine management system. Um, we're looking at getting these fault codes on a daily or well, daily basis, ideally, directly into the Lex Auto Lease system. So if a, an engine was reporting a specific fault, uh, we could report that before the warning lights brought on the dashboard on the vehicle. So that, that could then be looked at and booked in before the fault actually occurred with the vehicle. Again, hoping that the vehicle would be off-road for less time because the investigation purpose, most of that would have been covered off. Uh, additional to that, we're looking at upgrading our, our current PDAs, which we talked about earlier on, um, and we're looking at using these to, to record the condition in a greater way um, going forward. 
No, that's great. And overall, I mean, what would your kind of main advice be to other companies that are a similar size to to yourself, or or even um, smaller companies who have uh, similar issues uh, as this? Is there kind of one piece of advice or, or one lesson that you've learned over that time that you would you would pass on? I think one of the biggest things is that we live in a in a world where there, there is data all around us, and I think the the key to this is identifying the data that you can actually use to, to, to make good, to actually make a difference. Um, again, telemetry providers will provide you with a whole room full of data if you want them to. And I think the key and the art is to, is to narrowing down the data that you want and what you want to do with it and making it work for you. So I think my advice would be anyone that's currently got a, a telemetry provider, just to review the kind of data that you're taking from them. Make sure that you are actually doing something with it and you're getting your money's worth. And with regards to that data capture, is it uh, predominantly on technology such as that, or do you also rely on driver um, awareness and, and drivers doing their regular treks and being able to um, highlight anything uh, on top of, obviously, um, the technology working as well? I think it would be a mixture of the two, uh, if I'm to be honest, because a telemetry provider is never going to tell you that there's a, a broken light or a broken mirror. So I think the visual check should always be reliant on the driver and the driver feeding that back through his PDA. Once it's fed back through the PDA, someone actually action in that as well. Uh, it's very good sitting here creating stats on how many smash wingers you've had. However, if no one's actioning that, the vehicle's going to stay uncompliant. Um, yeah, I think that'd be my, my piece of advice that you've mixed the two. So you have your, your, engine, your engine management stuff or anything that can be provided over the telemetry provider. Use that information for that, but also you are still heavily reliant on the driver from the physical condition of the vehicle. That's fine. And, and just finally, what what feedback have you had from from drivers uh, over, over your uh, you know over the past five years or so, where you, you've made changes and and implemented uh, certain procedures? Has the feedback been um, positive by many drivers? And, and did you have to kind of overcome any obstacles with regards to kind of uh, driver buy-in in, into the process? I think when we first launched telemetry in the fleet a couple of years ago, there was a degree of suspicion around Big Brother, uh, etc., and the business keeping a watchful eye on people all the time. But it didn't take very long to get buy-in, really. When the when drivers became aware that whenever they sign into a vehicle, effectively they're they're protecting their own data, really. If it, if, you know, things like fines and um, questionable driving. Um, you know, can be brought into account if we know exactly who's driving what vehicle at what time. So I actually think it's worked in their favour, and we got we got buy-in very quickly. Equally, as a driver, nobody likes a van to be off the road for whatever reason. Nobody likes a, a vehicle, a delivery vehicle, to to not perform as it should. So again, presenting these vehicles on time every time and making sure that they are serviced regularly keeps them more reliable. Um, and that, that all helps with a um, with a driver when it comes to doing his daily job. That's brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Mark and Ian, uh, for for your time today and for your presentation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the first of three webinars uh, on the topic of maintenance and mechanics. Um, so if you are listening to this webinar, please do check our website and look out for our other two presentations. Thank you very much.